And the next speaker will speak about the research opportunities in the Faroe, uh, Faroe Islands. And uh, now we're going to hear some views from uh, uh, an individual that uh, is based abroad um, and, uh, and his views on what, what, what opportunities could be here. And this is Boye Beck Jensen. Um, he is a research associate and PhD researcher at Newcastle University in, in England. And his field of research is the design of electromagnetic components, uh, focusing particularly on energy efficient electrical machine design and uh, inductor design. So, Boye, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. The conference so far has been about the climate and climate uh, change, and therefore has focused on energy efficiency, sustainability, and so on. Uh, this workshop is titled the Transatlantic Climate Institute as a Knowledge Hub and is therefore focused more on research or rather a research institute. And I would like to address this topic with my presentation titled uh, Research Opportunities in the Faroes. Uh, my presentation comprises of three parts. The first one being additional workforce for a research institute. And here I'm thinking about the lecturers and the students at the Center of Maritime Studies and Engineering, which is called the uh, Vinnyha School in Faroese. Second part is alternative research in the Faroes, so uh, non-traditional research that we're not doing now, but which we ca could be doing. And then I'll conclude by uh, asking the question, how could we attract researchers to the Faroe Islands? The Faroe Islands are facing very exciting times ahead. Uh, the country has a long history of educating marine professionals, uh, both in nautical science as well as in marine engineering. And it is in the future that these educations will be upgraded from a diploma level and to a university degree level. Now, at diploma level, uh, academic research has not been compulsory. So, uh, therefore, the lecturers have been, uh, act, have been acting as uh, teaching staff and the students have mainly taken taught modules. But as we know, uh, research or academic research is the very foundation of university um, education. So therefore, both lecturers as well as students will have to do research when, when that happens. If we look at the Maritime Center, it has 180 students and they're spread over six semesters. So on average, that gives 30 students per semester. And there are 20 permanent lecturers who are working there full time. Now, assuming that the research project will be on the last semester, we will at any given time have 20 uh, full time lecturers who will be carrying out research as well as 30 students. And they usually take in students twice a year. So that will be ongoing uh, all the time, uh, of course, except for during holidays. Right, where am I? <laughs> if we look at, um, of course, it will be bachelor projects. So if we look at bachelor projects, many might think that it's, it's a very small project. But of course, as we all know, most larger projects comprise of several smaller projects. So why not um, gather these bachelor projects and build up a larger project that they could be part of? I believe that there are substantial benefits both for TACIT as well as for the Maritime Center. Because if we think of the Transatlantic Climate Institute, it will have, uh, let's face it, in the beginning, uh, a limited number of, of researchers. However, it will have a network stretching across the Atlantic, uh, both on the academic side with universities as well as on the industrial side with uh, industrial partners. Ah, sorry, <laughs> there it is. Um, at the Center of Maritime Studies and Engineering, they are not very experienced in uh, carrying out research, so they could really benefit from this experience of the researchers at TACIT. And uh, the Center of Maritime Studies will have uh, quite, quite a, a good workforce, sheer workforce, so uh, and in that way they could uh, aid the TACIT and be uh, an asset to them. It would therefore be my recommendation that as a feasibility study is possibly further carried on or the planning is, is carried on that people would take the Center of Maritime Studies and Engineering, Vindhya School, and that they would take that into consideration and the uh, uh, transitions that that school will be undergoing. Right. Uh, alternative research that we could do in the Faroes. 
In the Faroe Islands, the main, sorry, <laughs> the main export is, it comes from the fishing industry or fishing equipment or other sea-related products. So one would be inclined to think that all research carried out in, in the islands here should focus on the fishing industry or on uh, other sea topics. And as a first approach, that would be an excellent idea because we, we have the experience and the expertise. However, as the fishing industry has grown and developed, um, so have other industries. And here I'm thinking about the shipyards that we have, the well-functioning shipyards, the mechanical workshops, workshops for, for working stainless steel and aluminium, electrical workshops, all of which are used to partaking in one-off projects, so small projects rather than uh, mass production. They are therefore very well equipped for building prototypes, and there are certain areas of research that could really benefit from this accessibility to prototyping. Um, one of those areas, uh, to a certain extent, is, is uh, what I do, the research that I do at, at Newcastle University. And, uh, of course, um, the research that I do, um, or the, the way that it's carried out, can be applied to many other fields of mechanical engineering or other areas of electrical engineering. And because of that, I would like to go through a basic research project in, in my world. And uh, in that way, emphasize that this, what I do, as well as other areas, could just as well be done in the Faroes as it is in the UK or in America or anywhere else. Um, Right, so uh, I'll, I'll take you through this and I shall endeavor to make it interesting rather than boring. Um, first, you have an idea. So you might have an idea um, that you want to pursue or you might have a problem that has been given to you by the industry or by a regulatory body such as politicians and so on. Or you might have a solution to a problem, so you just need to find the problem. So, okay, let's go with that. You have, you have an idea that you want to pursue. Um, what you do in the beginning is you investigate, have other people worked in this area, and what have they done? Have they possibly even cracked the problem? So they've already solved your, your, your idea. And after that, you go into doing some basic design calculations, what's called back of an envelope calculations, or in this, kind, uh, or in this case, napkin calculations. You might use Excel just to do some basic uh, design calculations, but you don't go bunkers with them and go really into details at this point, but rather just uh, uh, do in, an initial investigation. Once you're satisfied with that, you would go into modeling the machine or the component. This is uh, um, an induction machine, something that I work with. Um, and then you do a simulation. And from these simulations, you can tell, you can predict how the component will behave under certain conditions. And that's a three-phase inductor and a uh, simulation of that. Once you're happy with your simulations and your detailed design, which would take place in, uh, during the modeling and simulation, you go on to prototyping, which I argued earlier that the Faroe Islands is very capable of. This is a prototype that I'm building as we speak, uh, a rotor and some rotor bars that are cut out of this copper slab. They go into each of these. Um, once you've built your prototype, you want to test it. And testing is a bit similar to what we all did in physics in school, where you touch the Van de Graaff generator, the hair goes up in the air, possibly not to the same extent as this girl. I think mine only wobbled, but they said it was because it was dirty. <laughs> um, and all along, you might have been thinking about patents and publications. You might think about patents all the way in the beginning or possibly later on. And you might get one, two, three publications, maybe four, depending on, on the project. Right, 